Hi, my name is Robert Grossman, and I'm the founder of Black Diamond Leadership. And I want to share a, a very emotional story of something that just recently happened to me where I was able to really engage emotional intelligence to make a huge difference in other people's lives. Um, before I tell you the story, though, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to share any comments, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, and if you want to receive updates and notifications when I publish more videos like this on leadership and team building topics, emotional intelligence, communication, and trust, um, please hit the subscribe button so you'll know when we publish videos. All right, back to my story. So this has happened recently, and I was driving um, up to Mammoth Mountain, California, which is in the Eastern Sierras. And the way to get there from Los Angeles is along a highway called the 395, which goes up the Owens Valley. And the 395 has these really long stretches of highway where there's just nothing. There's no services. Um, there's no there's no gas stations. There's no restaurants. There's just nothing. Right? It's just in the middle of the desert. And uh, we were driving up on a Sunday afternoon, a beautiful day, and we're coming up over a little tiny um, you know, hill, and we see this dust exploding up into the sky, and then we could see um, the top part of a of a an eighteen wheeler careening off the highway, going towards the the desert, into the desert. And I turned to the person I was traveling with and and said, "Oh my gosh, I think there's a bad accident up there." And just another hundred yards later, we arrive on the scene, and sure enough, the at the fourteen we eighteen wheeler was off in the desert, and there was a SUV that had the whole side of it ripped off and looked like it may have rolled, but I wasn't sure. And so I immediately pulled over and got out to help. Now, I used to be on a ski patrol many years ago, and I was a leader on the ski patrol, and I received advanced training in how to manage multi-casualty situations, big situations, how to lead the whole thing. And, um, and so I felt pretty confident when I was getting out of my car to walk over there that I could handle this situation too. However, while I was walking over there, it dawned on me that I wasn't on ski patrol, that I didn't have a radio, that I didn't have any of my fellow patrollers there with me, and that there wasn't an ambulance waiting for me at the bottom of the mountain that I could take an injured person to and transfer to the paramedics immediately. And as I started walking towards the car, I see a man get out of the front seat of the SUV Runs to runs right behind him, and I see his son is in the car, and he begins to pull him out. And his son was probably um, nine or ten years old. I tried to stop him, but it was too late. He already had his body halfway out, and the seatbelt was preventing him from taking his son all the way out. And I ran over there, and I could see immediately that his son was unconscious. So I told the man, "Hey, stop! Let me help you. Let me have your son find a way to get the seatbelt off of him." So I held his head, and I put my hand over his. You know, his artery here and felt that he did have a heartbeat, thank God, and he was breathing. And um, and so, you know, dad was really panicking. I had to control that situation and um, took the kid out finally, got him on the ground, had somebody hold his head. And then I started looking around to see if anybody else was hurt. I saw mom was there and a daughter was there, also a young girl, and they seemed to be shaken up um, but not hurt badly. So in that moment, it, it, it hit me that I'm alone here, that at that moment, nobody else was there who knew more than me to handle a situation like this. And I also realized that it could be up to, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes before additional help would arrive. And I started feeling that panic. I started feeling uncertain. I started feeling like I should just get back in my car and leave. And I realized I was having what I call a key moment. And a key moment is a situation, a communication, an event that demands a response and is usually under stress. And that definitely, this is one of those situations. And so I started doing what I teach and train and coach my clients to do. I just stood up just for a second, took a couple of deep breaths, and I literally, or figuratively rather, took all of those emotions, all the feelings of fear, all that stuff, and I if you will, put it in a box and shut the lid. And when I did that, when I recognized that I was having a very strong emotional response to the situation, and I was able to stop that response and instead get very present, I was able then to see what was going on around me. Um, I took complete control of the situation. 
my situational awareness increased. I was looking for resources, trying to figure out who could help and who was not qualified to help. And as people were rushing over to try to help, um, I was able to tell them to take a step back and give us some room. So immediately ask somebody to get some, make some shade out of a blanket or tarp or something. And, um, and dad was right there holding his son. And after a few minutes, the son started to cry and uh, he was still very delirious, had no idea where he was, but he was also moving his arms and his, and his legs. So in that moment, I recognized that he probably did not have a spinal or neck injury. And as they started moving around, somebody rushed up and said, hold him down, hold him down. And I looked at him and I said, no, sir, we're not going to hold him down. If we do that, we could cause more damage and stress him out even more. He's moving on his own. Nobody's moving him. And all he wants to do is try to sit up, which probably was trying to make him more comfortable. I'm not sure. So, so we were managing the situation. And uh, about 15 minutes later, a CHP officer showed up, opened up his trunk, took a big bag out, dropped it by us, and then walked away. And it was a first aid kit. And I asked the CHP officer, yelled over, what's the timing for the medics? And he said, 35 to 45 minutes. Another wave of panic set in. That's a long time. And right now the kid was breathing and who knows what kind of injuries he had. So I went back and again, just managing the situation and keeping him safe and reassuring mom and reassuring the daughter that everything's okay and working with dad as well, who was next to him. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, about 15 minutes later, dad started acting a little bit weird. And I asked him what was going on. And he said, I feel really woozy. I feel dizzy. I feel like I need to throw up. I feel like I need to pass out. And I, in that moment, I thought, okay, let's see what else happened here. So I stood up, walked over to the car, and noticed that the steering wheel airbag did not deploy, which means that there was a high likelihood that his chest hit the steering wheel, and he might have either some broken ribs or worse, something like called cardiac tamponade, where fluid fills in the sac around the heart, keeps the heart from, from beating, which in that moment, without paramedics, there's nothing you can do. And, um, and somebody else showed up and said, hi, I'm a nurse, how can I help? And I said, great, I had her work with dad. And then I asked mom to come over and be with her son. And, um, and then that moment, another woman all of a sudden showed up with a toy and, and wanted to engage this little boy who was still very delirious. And, and her opinion was, we need to change the conversation. And I said, no, we're not changing conversations. Please back up and move away. Well, the father ended up being okay, as far as I could tell. Um, probably had a little bit of shock. The nurse was taking care of him. And, and finally, about 40 minutes later, the paramedics showed up. And I was able to transfer the scene to them and then continue on my way to Mammoth. Why am I sharing this with you? Well, we look at emotional intelligence and so many, the benefits of it are uh, really impact so many different aspects of our lives. But the, the key to emotional intelligence is that when you are having that key moment that you're able to, you learn how to shift out of a panic mode or a reactionary mode and move into a responding mode. When we're reacting, things are moving really fast, right? When we respond, we can slow things down a little bit. We can assess what's going on around us. We can see what resources we have available. We can also look and determine if what we're seeing and what we're experiencing emotionally is something that is real or not, meaning a distortion in our reasoning. Are we looking at things as black and white thinking or are we catastrophizing the event, which just causes more stress? So this is an example of, of how I recently used emotional intelligence. And you know, I don't know what happened to that family. I don't know what happened to that little boy. Um, I will not, never know what happened to them, um, but I, I know that because of my training in emotional intelligence, I was able to do the very best job that I could do in that situation without causing further harm to mom, dad, the little boy, or his sister, and manage the situation until more professional help could arrive. Hey, thanks for watching. Again, if you like this video, please hit like. Any comments you have, I welcome your comments. And if you want to receive more videos like this or copies of our webinars or whatnot, hit subscribe so you too will know when we publish more videos. Take care.